The Astros and Yankees played a wild extra inning game where the Astros walked them off, and we have a pitcher's duel coming up in game three of the NLC. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Talking Baseball. It is October 14th. We're in the middle of the championship series. Two games have been played in each in the AL. It is now tied one to one in the NL. The Cardinals are down two. They are winless. The Nats are two and oh. We will be recapping the Yankees Astros game from last night and previewing game three we're running behind uh because I am a pile of trash right now and uh I can't really talk and it's gonna be a weird episode I don't think a podcast has ever opened with those words my name is John Boy and that was Jake if you're a first time viewer listener yeah man I I uh I texted Jake last night and I said, because the Yankees went to what, 1 a.m. and then we recorded till 2 a.m. I didn't get into bed until 3 a.m. And I texted you and I said, hey, I'm not setting an alarm. I just going to, I have to let myself sleep in as long as I can. Well, I did that and I thought it would have me rejuvenated. And I was like, all right, let's start the day good. So I went to across the street to get breakfast and coffee and I couldn't talk when I tried to order my food and they were looking at me like, and I was like, uh, can I, uh, and then I didn't realize that's how the shape I'm in. I told you, I think I'm getting sick. I think I'm sick. Anyway, I've never been as foggy and and brainless as I have. So how are you doing? (laughs) I'm doing all right. I, uh, and not to be salt in the wound. I had a pretty good refresher sleep. (laughs) I'm okay. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. It's, uh, time heals all wounds (laughs) last night. There's definitely a, a tough low moment. I know right after Houston walked off, my girlfriend who had been asleep for three hours like popped up and gave the sleepy like, are you still awake? What's going on? And she looked and it was just me with my head down and five empty white claws. And she's like, is everything okay? And I was like, I don't know how you want me to answer that question, but I think you should go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> we did a sad, sad recap of the game. Man. Brutal. I will say this: this this podcast is more for baseball fans, obviously, just across the league. And if you're a third party fan, which I'm sure we have a ton of that listen to this that aren't Yankees fans, aren't Astros fans, if you watch that game, that's a hell of a game. That's a crazy. Yeah, game. There, there there were some real cool moments, and I I think we'll dive into that. Justin Verlander when he walked off the mound. I don't know if you saw this, but he kind of looked at the Yankees dugout like, man, that was seven point two innings of fucking war. Um, so I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be cool to look back at, obviously didn't go the Yanks ways. We might earn some Cardinals fans today, Jim. I just realized that. And I know you and them have been beefing online. So I'm, I'm excited. Why are we going to earn Cardinals fans? Cause I think we're rooting for them today. Oh yeah. yeah, Big time. Big time. Yeah. I don't want a boring series. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this episode is brought to you by Todd. A man, well, that's the Todd father. He's a big talking Yanks supporter. Been with us all season. Appreciate that. Thanks, Todd, for coming aboard talking baseball. Joseph W. Leonard. What do you think the W stands for? Win, baby. <laughs> that's lame. Joseph. I might know Win. Joe Leonard. I know okay. a Joe Leonard. Joey Leo. Uh, David Altman. Daniel Valera. Valera is a cool name. Yeah. Bravik. Bravik. Yeah. Constantine with a C, which is a bummer. Uh, wow. Constantine Kohler. Well, I, you know, the, the 2003 something corporate fan in me, I can spell Constantine with a K and I can like it. I mean, you write down that lyric and you're just the baddest guy in middle school. Yeah. It's actually I, I can you went, spell confusion with a K and I can like it. I think if you went back over to the to the breakfast place this morning, they'd be like, Were you a two thousand three something corporate fan? I know them because I go there a lot and like they're my neighbors right. and I was just totally and fucking embarrassed myself. Welcome to my everyday. Mark Gorman. 
the gore man he is our yeah. latest to round it out thank you guys very much as i fake energy here this yankees astros game jake was nuts um you don't have a burn right i do have a burn oh wow you wrote one you didn't have one last night you wrote one today yeah, I mean, uh, the burn I would have written in last the, night. the wee hours of the morning after some daiquiris about that game would not have been anything anyone would want to hear. I don't think what Yankee it, fans what would it want sounded, to hear them. Would it have sounded more like Adam Sandler in The Wedding Singer, or would it have sounded more like Ooh. Jason Siegel's Dracula's Lament? Oh, I always Jason Siegel's Dracula's Lament. <laughs> Lament, Lament, I'm fucking dumb. <laughs> and if I see Van Helsing, I pray to the Lord I will slay him. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a it's not a fantastic burn, but you got to burn it. It's getting kind of hard to believe things are going to get better. <laughs> <laughs> I might I might get that tattooed. I've been drowning too long to believe that the tide's going to turn. That's such a good song. Or seen yeah. in a I movie. A, I bought a keyboard to try to learn how to play that song. Peter, you suck. Peter, you <laughs> suck. Peter, you do a thing of value. Okay, let's burn it. Okay. On your mark. Get set. Burn. Game two in a must-win game for Houston with their cat daddy, Justin Verlander. First, the Yankees and James Paxton, the big maple, eh? And he'd get himself into some syrup early. C.J. Correa, RBI double. Pax Daddy gets pulled after 2.1. It's not easy being green, and it ain't easy hitting green as Chad puts in a heroic effort to keep the score at one nothing. Strohs. Justin Verlander made one big mistake to one big man. Judge jumps Justin for a two-run salami. It's 2-1 Yanks. Nervous times in H-Town until top five. Springer Dinger, Georgie, sends one into orbit. Locked up at twos. It stay that way until the 11th. And then Correa, Oppo Taco off the Happer. Astros moonwalk it off. 3-2, tie the series at ones. Whew, whew. And I've been living too hard to believe things are going to get easier now. <laughs> Woohoo, Dracula! <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> quote the whole movie. Yeah, there's so much to talk about in this game, like little yes. things that we could get into that I, I just, I, I just kind of like, nah. If you're, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's so much, man. There's so much. Yeah. Paxton only went two and a third for the Yankees, but that was fine. I mean, you'd like him yeah. to go five, but the Yankees have a bullpen built to survive that. If they had more than two runs, then they go seven innings with the bullpen, one earned run or whatever, you know? So yeah. like Chad to Otto to Canely to Britain to Chapman, it would have worked out if they just could get more offense. So like, a lot of people are trying to say this is what happens when the Yankees don't have any pitching. They held Houston to three runs over two games, so it's not on the Yankees pitching. They're doing their job. Uh, the Yankees offense was pretty bad, and and the way I said it was I liked the way they were approaching Verlander to get two across, a lot of traffic against him. It was I liked their approach against Verlander. Uh, it seemed like when we f the Yankees finally got to the pen, that's when they're supposed to really attack. But it seems then they were like, what's our approach now? And no one could figure out how to attack it. And big credit to Joe Smith out of, is that his name? Yeah. Out of Houston's pen, the sidewinder, 35-year-old, been around for a while, submarine pitcher almost. He was really good. And uh, yeah, he had some pitches that were really, really good. So... I mean, that's kind of my summary on, like, the, the big picture. Uh, I see a lot of people trying to blame Yankees pitching and Paxton for not going deep. They could have easily won the game, shutting down the Astros to only two runs with Adovino's, uh meatball to Springer, and good for Springer for jumping all over it. It's the Yankees' offense that was the problem. And they got a couple guys that are looking really bad. But to be fair, Jake, 
Uh, Astros have a couple guys that look really bad at the plate as well. And uh, credit to their bullpen. They, their bullpen stepped up. Yeah, and, and unfortunately for the Yanks, one of the guys who had been looking back for the Astros was Springer uh, until Ottavino hung that pitch to him, and he, he wrecked it. Yeah, man, I mean, this was an incredible game. It was 2-2 two, two into the 11th. Um, and, yeah, bo- both bullpens did their job. I mean, Harris Harris looked really good. Ozuna looked really good. Smith, uh, Presley's the one that, for them, it doesn't look like uh, the, the Yankees are pretty much all over him. And even... Uh, Josh James has has been having a big early series for them, which which is huge. He's he's arguably got the most talented arm out there, um, and yeah, I mean the, that that's the thing that's going to get misconstrued in this. If, if you're listening to, and I'll, I'll send a shot fired at the the former leader ESPN, but I'm I'm sure if you turned into ESPN across the country, it'd be like, oh, the Yankees starting pitching couldn't do it, and that's why the bullpen blew it. Like, no, like Paxton didn't look great. And they went to the bullpen because they wanted to. And then the bullpen did their job, if, except for one pitch, for about eight innings. Uh, so, yeah, and it, it was great baseball. There, the, the other replay you're going to see a ton of is, is LeMahieu trying to score. Uh, I think it was Gardy ripped a ball, went off Altuve. Correa barehands it, pegs it home. A perfect throw, perfect play uh, by Carlos Correa. Um, and that... You know, Yankee fans were mad about that at the time because it would have been bases loaded, but it would have been bases loaded for Gary, who's one of the Yankees that has looked lost this series. Um, I even think so you yeah, can't man. even think about like in the moment. Phil Nevin's not thinking oh, how many outs are there, who's up, what's the situation. Like in the moment, he's thinking that ball is bouncing away erratically from Altuve, and send I, him I, home. I think. I think that's part of the third base coach's job a little bit to know who's on deck. Like if, if Aaron judge was coming up, I don't think they send LeMayhew. Um, I think so they do. It, you kind of have to know the situation a little bit, but yeah, I mean, the runners were moving, the ball bounces away from Altuve. Um, and yeah, if, if, if there was a minor bobble, if there, if the throw was a little bit off, uh, DJ LeMayhew has a really good chance to score Correa. Who's in a position, you know, Carlos Correa, he's on the second base side of the bag, barehanding a ball, turning his body and throwing home. That's not a throw. Shortstops practice a lot. <laughs> That's it, it's it's not a regular routine play. He pegged it. I think it came in at 88 miles per hour on Statcast, um, and Lemayhu was out by a good couple steps. And um, yeah, it was a it was an aggressive play. If Lemayhu scores there, everyone's a genius. The catcher has to catch the ball. Um, you know, if Correa short hops it, that's a tough play to make for the catcher. Uh, they executed it perfectly. And there, there was a lot of stuff executed perfectly, except uh, kind of two pitches by, by the Yankees um, and one pitch by Justin Verlander. Yeah, that Verlander pitch to Judge was just as much a hanger as the Adovino was to Springer. But credit to both of them. And uh, I will say... The balls are so dejuiced, Jake, and it's crazy how much our brain, or at least mine, I know a lot of other people out there with me, has trained for like hard contact to just be a home run. Uh, I think in the regular season, Correa has uh, one earlier, Springer has one earlier, Judge has two, uh, Geo has one. Uh, every time the ball's hit, I'm like, oh, it's going. Yeah, you're uh you're you're not gonna be too pleased with me. I'm not full on on juice balls yet. I think there's a chance. I definitely think there's a chance. I just think we have such a small sample size. Playoff baseball is different, and like we don't have a lot of the bad pitchers out there that would be giving up a lot of these, a lot of the moon shots and stuff like that. Yeah, and I, I mean there I, there are there's a lot of with, I know it's a small sample size, but there's a lot of data with these Samus. Yeah. And show. I, I went through those threads and I, I'm not saying it's wrong. I, I think there's, there's very well a chance if it came out in three weeks and it's like, Oh yeah, balls were unjuiced a little bit. And now the number everyone's thrown around is the four and a half feet. The number, the Cardinals front office threw out there. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked, but at the same time, I think you could also put together a decent case where it's like, okay, it's a small sample size. We've got every team throwing their best players, um, there's a, a lot better pitching playoff baseball is a little different. I know the weather thing is kind of a factor, but that one guy kind of ruled it out in his thread. I I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm not fully bought in on unjuice ball yet. Oh yeah. I don't care about the pitching talent. I just hard contact, like 
so many of these are gone off the bat, and we've seen players like celebrate and like thinking they got them too, and then they just fall short. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean the one the one player that was celebrating was a rookie catcher that thought he <laughs> walked off and won the series for a Dodgers. So I don't know. There's a couple like Gio thought he got that one. Judge thought he got his. Verlander thought Judge's was out. Uh, there was like you know. I think that's a little uh, you fear have to of the prove playoffs to me too. It's not basically in my head. Right, right, and I I need more proof. It is. <laughs> yeah, because even little like even Glaber's bloop died. Balls are just not traveling as far. Like every, I have a bad read on every ball, and all season long I didn't have bad reads on balls. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm interested to see. Like I, I don't know, Jay Happ comes in and he was arguably the least talented pitcher to come in for the Yankees. Correa's ball traveled pretty well. <laughs> the one, the one hanger that Adovino left for Correa or for Springer, that ball traveled pretty well. So I, well, home, I don't know. I, I, home I, I still, still think there's a lot of playoff baseball involved in it. Yeah. Um. Uh, there's all this stuff uh, about tipping because Paxton tipped his pitches earlier with uh, against the Astros. The Astros clearly had a tell on uh, Glass now in Game Five. The Yankees had pictures of Presley in his set position because he had a tell, and then they scored runs off him at four singles in a row. There's it's come to a, a heightened point, Jake. And I just anyone that listens to talking baseball, you're my good friend, and I like you. If you're one of these people that may be new to the game, and that's great, welcome. We welcome you to the fan base. It is so normal for players to try and find tells in other pitchers. It's not dirty. It's not cheating. It's 100% gameplay. And I have so many people that don't understand that. They're like, why can't it just be that the Astros are good? Why do they have to be picky? You know, Astros fans upset. It's like, well, they are. They're really good at finding tells. Every single game, the pitchers that aren't pitching in the game, their job is to stare at the other pitcher, stare at the runners on base, stare at the first base coach, and find tells. Like, it's so normal, but there's so many people in my mentions getting upset. So I want to let you know. Astros yeah, fans, it, be proud it, of it. I think your team's I, really I good. Part, part of what's getting lost in translation there is like, yeah, Alex Bregman's still really good. And another part of that is he can pick up on different things pitchers are doing to give him an advantage to know that fastball's coming or to know the curveball's coming. And it it is, you, you know I like to compare things across sports a little bit. Like, this is a huge part of, like, the NFL and NBA, like, if a wide receiver on a go route, if he always does the same thing every time with his hands or something like that, like that's exactly what a cornerback is looking for, a defensive coordinator. Like we we see this across sports, and no, it's 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 not even close to cheating. It's it's trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you see what Brandon McCarthy replied to me? Because I tweeted out like the thing we said about Josh Tolley, how he said Batista was really good at it, and Brandon McCarthy, ex pitcher. Uh, re- replied to my tweet and said, Carlos Beltran could pick up every pitcher's tell if they had one in five pitches. Yeah. Like he was the best at it. Yeah. So. And it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it encourage, you should want your, your, your team is doing it. Not, not, I wasn't going to, I was going to say encourage your team to do it. Your team is doing it. It's, it's just a matter of how you know it or not. Um, you mentioned our friend of the program, Tim Melville, the Rockies pitcher, also reached out and like, yeah, it's like, it's it's part of what guys are supposed to do, and it could be the littlest of things. It could be in their footwork. It could be when they receive the call. Um, you know, there you said they were looking at first base coaches to see their reaction, to see if they see something. Um, and I mean, it can be it can be as subtle as subtle can get because it's they you're trying to get an advantage to win the game. Sports. Sports. Yeah, so I, I, I would guess a vast majority of people listening to this understand that. But if you're new and, and you don't realize that, that it's, it's not a point of contention. So many people still in my mentions. Oh, yeah. Was, uh, I was like, oh, shut up. Anyway, this game goes, goes back to the stadium. I mean, if you're a Yankees fan... You're heartbroken because of the fashion in which game two was lost and all the little moments that could have won it. But 
you're happy. You held the Astros to three runs in two games at their stadium. You split their stadium. It's now a five-game set, and the Yankees have home field advantage. The Astros have Cole on the mound. So that's the balance right there. Five game set, Yankees now have home field advantage. The next three games at Yankee Stadium, the pitching doesn't really match up great for the Astros besides Cole. Uh, because, I mean, once they get past Cole, Granky, the Yankees already beat, and then the bullpen day. But if there's a rain out, that pushes that back. Anyway, this is going to be a good set. I think Jake's pretty convinced it's going to go seven games. It seems like we're in for a hell of a ride. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the I think the part that was crushing, obviously an extra inning playoff loss is always going to be crushing, but if the Yankees went up, went up 2-0, at, and I, I said this on Talking Yanks, we'd, we'd be doing the Conor McGregor walk around town. You'd be speaking perfect English to your breakfast place. Um, we'd, be talking, we'd be talking about the Nats-Yankees World Series and, and figuring out, you know, buying train tickets and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, Houston is right back in it. And, you know, Bregman comes out with the quote that, you know, this it was never going to be 0-2. Uh, a little bit of a hard-o quote. I, I think a lot of honest Houston fans would say that, too. Well, I don't um, care about that quote. He's just, he's just, I mean, he's, I don't care about it. I I don't have any qualms with that quote. Oh, yeah, I I, I don't. It's just a little bit of a hard-o quote. I mean, it's, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um but yeah, you you went from two zero. You could ba- basically the series was was over in Yankees fans' head if they won that one. Now it's one one with Garrett Cole coming out, um, and it's it's almost like Houston. I, I with Garrett Cole on the mound, it feels like Houston has the advantage going into this game. It'll be interesting to see how the stadium's rocking for the Tuesday four o'clock start. Uh, the Yankees have been really good at home um, for the duration of the season. They they haven't. During the regular season, they hadn't lost a home series since mid-April. That's that's real. Um, and then they sweep the Twins, so they are confident at home. Uh, that Cole that Cole game at home is is going to be interesting. And I know you know Joe Torre. <laughs> Joe Torre changed the the umpires that the 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 chief of the crew it calls game three because he thinks it's the most important, which I think that's hilarious. It's a little bit of old school mindset, but it's kind of fun too. So I don't know. I must watch TV. It's been good baseball. Like I'm, I am happy. We're not sitting here being like, Oh, you know, that ball goes off or foot and we lost the game. Like, you know what? They, they won it. I will say that I like that by Joe Torrey. I'm thinking yeah. about, I'm thinking about it right now. And it's a good transition into previewing the upcoming series because for Yankees Astros game three is now one one tie. It's a huge game. And for the Cardinals Nationals, game three is tonight, and it's either the series is over or we have a series. It's a huge game. Yeah. Let's uh, Chief. I think I said Master Chief. I think that's a little Halo reference, so Master Chef. Master Chef. Gordon let's Ramsey. let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and preview the next game. All right, game 3 NLCS Cardinals need to get some fucking hits, man. They need to get some hits. It's a great, great matchup. It's Flaherty versus Strasburg. I mean, Annabelle Sanchez and fucking Scherzer had no hits, no hitters going through six. And now we have Strasburg, who's been the best pitcher for them going in game three, Jake. Well, it's a tall order for the Cardinals, but they do have Flaherty on the mound. And I actually think there's so much pressure on Flaherty because you're trying to win for an offense that can't do anything and is going against one of the better pitchers like Flaherty's got to be thinking oh fuck I got to be perfect because he had a really good game versus the Braves and lost that one because it was a Soroka outpitched him so I mean I don't know how much pressure Flaherty's putting on himself but I think if he was to sit down and really think about the situation he could really work himself into a frenzy of pressure yeah, and I, I think he wants it. I, I mean, from what we've seen about Jack Flaherty's personality when we saw him in the game five that ended up being the blowout, but he still wanted to 
to shove and, you know, his mom in the stands, good time. I mean, Flaherty wants this. He's he's a tough dude. Um, and I think that's the other thing that got me with the juice balls things going on is that, <laughs> you know, the Cardinals are like, well, the ball's traveling four and a half feet less. <laughs> hey, you guys need to worry a lot less about that and worry about just putting some damn balls in play. Um because it's right now it's ugly and and you and I we circled around this last time and you could say this with so many of the playoff games but St. Louis needs a hit in the first inning. <laughs> they they need if they if they don't I think you the number you said was the 4th inning. If fourth they don't inning. have a hit by the 4th inning, the series is done. I think mentally Cardinals players, not all of them. There will be some with some guts and some gusto and drive. I think half of them, if there's no hits by the fourth inning, they're like, it ain't us. We had a good run. Yeah, and I um, this this is where Cardinals fans end up hating us, but I, I don't know. When, when you start thinking about what, what the World Series can look like, I mean, the, the Cardinals, I, I don't know. Prove me wrong, Cardinals. That's what I always come back to. It looks like uh, we've got some guys that have decent numbers off Strasburg. Ozuna is 14 for 44. That's a 318 average and a lot of experience. Uh, Goldschmidt, 6 for 23. Um, and I think oh, I, this might be the official lineup. That'd be really early. But I, I think Jose Martinez, we talked about him last time. He's four for his last four all pinch hit at bats. Uh, if you've got that guy and you've essentially been one hit back-to-back games, you need to put him in the lineup. Um, so I, I don't know. Like, that'll be an interesting thing to watch if they do shake up the lineup, if it is Jose Martinez. You know, if he puts up – if he gets a hit early, like the Cardinals look around and be like, yep, that's what changed. We're good now. Um, you, you just need something to get you away from the past two games. Do you think they need to start Ozuna – or st- fucking start – Jose Martinez because I do I do I I do I mean he's he's a guy it's not like it's not like he's just this bench guy that's lucked into a few hits like he's a good hitter and he's he's been a part of this team for a couple years now uh he's part of the reason like a guy like Luke Voigt was expendable who full circle look at the Yanks now um but no I I think you have to find a way to get him in the lineup um so uh, if he goes to right field, what's uh, what's so, the movement uh, there? ESPN has like a I don't know if this is a mock lineup in front of me, but it it would be Fowler, Wong, Goldschmidt, Ozuna, Molina, Martinez, Edmund, DeYoung. What's the um, defensive alignment? Uh, with Martinez in right field, Fowler in center, Edmund at third. Yes. So, so I guess Carpenter is the guy you're taking out, out of the lineup. Yeah. Well, he's been, he doesn't have any hits, right? No one has any hits. I think you have to get Martinez into this game for one yeah, or two at bats. If then, if something shakes up, shake it up. But I, he, he, he has two hits and two at bats, and the rest of the team has two hits in 50 or 60 at bats. Two games. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I just think, I mean, you know, we saw the Matt Carpenter thing. He took himself out of the game. Um, defensively at third base he's not what he used to be um and I mean it's not like Matt Carpenter is going to be out of this game it's National League Baseball like you're he's going to have an opportunity to be a threat off the bench um whether it's against Strasburg later or Daniel Hudson later potentially um so yeah I I don't know when when you have a guy who's matched (laughs) the team's hit total for two days you gotta roll him out there Jake Jack Flaherty hasn't faced the Washington Nationals at all this year. But I was looking at his game log. Guess how many starts he had against the Cubs? Uh, Six. Exactly six. I think that's the most I've ever seen. I know they're in the same division, but it's still a lot of games against one team. Yeah. I mean, six six out of 19 games, you saw the same dude. That's nuts, right? I don't know how that worked out. Anyway, uh, he saw the Nationals at the end of 2018, uh, and he went five innings pitched, one earned run. Probably, and he was facing Scherzer. That's kind of cool. Trey Turner got him for a home run. Watch out for Trey. Ooh, interesting. Jumping fastballs. 
Yeah, and uh, Strasburg, you know, he's he's got his faux historic stats, if we want to call him that. He's been extremely good as a playoff pitcher, One three two ERA, uh, five starts, six starts, whatever it is now. Um, and he's, I mean, he's going to be there. Uh, I, I don't, if you're the Cardinals, you're not coming in the mindset with them. <laughs> well, hey, it worked against the Braves. Go get that 10 run first inning. But I don't think you're going to knock around Strasburg. If anything, it's, it's a bloop and a blast or, you know, you, a small ball inning here or there. Um, but there's no reason to not think this is going to be one nothing. 2-1 in the seventh inning, right? Get get someone on for Azuna. His numbers for Strasburg okay. are, are pretty good. That's like your that. shot. Get someone on for Ozuna. Um And then Goldie's got to come through, man. Didn't we say that? That like it, Goldie and and no, that was the game too. Goldie and uh, Rendon had bad stats versus the other pitcher. That was game two. We're rooting Cardinals, right? You're rooting Cardinals just because you want it to become a series. Um, you can really, you know, the the lore of Jack Flaherty can become more of a thing, um, and it should be more of a thing for how good his second half was. Um, yeah, man, I, I don't know. Like, again, like Goldie on the, on the postseason as a whole, his numbers still look really good. But this series, obviously, everyone's numbers look bad except Jose Martinez. Um I yeah, have a, I, I don't I have know. a close second rooting interest. Okay. A no hitter. Oh, like wow. if the Cardinals are gonna lose this game, right? They better not get a hit. That's that's basically where I'm. Either win the game, Cardinals, or make history and get no hit through six innings again. Yeah, let's get historical. Let's have some fun. Um, Isn't that your favorite T-shirt? Let's get historical. Let's get historical. I uh I had a sick to my stomach moment before we started doing the podcast. One of one of my buddies, Andy, sent me a late birthday present. It's a shirt I'm wearing. It's a Kentucky Go Cats shirt. He went to University of Kentucky. Uh so did James Paxton. So I I put the shirt on, took a picture, and then I maybe it was the coffee, but my stomach wasn't too happy with myself for a second. Did uh does your friend know that? Calipari is my neighbor. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool then. Cool. Great. Great. James Paxton went to Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense in my head. I know, right? Fucking Canada kid goes and lives in Kentucky. In our heads, is this series actually over? Yeah. 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 I don't see the Cardinals winning. I'm rooting for them. I don't see it happening. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm rooting for the Cardinals hard tonight just so my road game wins the first three, so I can dig that quote up. Um, Unless yeah, I think I think un- I think the net, just just think about it when when we're talking World Series preview, and Cardinals fans like close your ears right now or tweet mean things at Talking Jake. World Series preview: either the mighty Astros or the mighty Yankees advance. All those young good guys on the Astros: Verlander, Cole, the Yankees, all their talent, the home runs, the prestige, the Yankees. If the Cardinals come through, it's going to be like, well, Goldie's good. Yachty and Wainwright are giving it one more try. If it's the Nationals, it's Strasburg, Scherzer. Corbin, they've got their big three. Juan Soto, the young star. Rendon, the underrated MVP. Like, I'm sorry, Cardinals. And, and Jim, you can confirm this. When it comes to brackets, NCAA tournament, back to Kentucky, you know I like to fill them out storyline style. Like, I love when the old assistant coach faces his, his former mentor. Like, I'm going to fill out my bracket so those teams meet. If you start doing storyline of this World Series... It doesn't have the Cardinals in it. Okay, I'm a dead man in St. Louis. Thank you. You're a fucking jerk, man. Here's what I jerk. Here's what I want to see. Are you ready? Close your eyes. We're 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 in the third inning, okay? And my eyes are closed. It's the third inning. Strasburg has uh, he just finishes the third inning and he's got his nine up, nine down. Cardinals don't have a base runner nor a hit yet, okay? Strasburg now comes out for the top of the fourth inning, okay? Someone okay. in the stands in D.C. stands up at a quiet moment and says, 
hey, let's get historical. And then everyone mm. in Washington just starts clapping, clapping, and then yeah. let's get historical. Let's get historical. All Let's the all get the pre- historical. The the president mascots pop out and they're like, "Yes, historical. Yes. yes, history. Yes, yes. Let's make history." And then the Cardinals fans, they say, "Okay, fine." And then they get uh, Strasburg perfect game, and then and then it's a big T shirt, and everyone loves it. No, it'll fully put me on Team Cardinals. I want two guys on the Cardinals leaning into pitches. Roger Dorn? Just full Little League Roger Dorn style. We need guys on base. <laughs> Start leaning over the plate. Fuck it. Put put uh, Jose Martinez in, and everyone thinks he's going to be the savior that gets hits. No, he's just going to throw his elbow at one. Harry Bader finds a way to get hit by a pitch in this game, even if he's not playing. Full, full like, pivot turn facing the pitcher takes it to the dick. Just Ooh. runs, just runs to first like it was nothing. Everyone's like, "That's not cool, man. You should be hurt." He's yeah, like, "Nah, either, nah." We're we're, nah. Gl- we're glad you got hit, but yeah, nah. All right, it's the end of this show. Yeah, <laughs> go our go our Cardinals. I think uh, I think I told uh, I told employee Bill. <laughs> I really like that nickname. I don't know if he likes it. But <laughs> yeah, I don't love it. <laughs> People were asking who's who's that. Uh, on the periscope and I was last employee bill it's kind of funny anyway I told him don't come in today because like I'm a bag of shit I'm probably gonna go just like crawl to the movie theater and watch Joker at some point nice and just lay on the couch heard a really uh you know I love my dude Ryan Rossillo um he had Adnan Verk on who has a popular movie podcast and he's like a movie geek geek they had a really good debate about Joker. It was interesting. I mean, it's totally over my head because I have like no actual movie context in my brain, but you'd probably like the conversation. Well, I think uh, on our movie podcast, Six Pack Cinema, we're going to be reviewing it tonight, and I'm going to make my return and join them. The return. Hopefully I can pronounce words and shit. I think I got through this okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, that ends it. We'll be back tomorrow to recap whatever happens tonight. Hopefully there's some excitement and uh, preview game three, Cole versus Severino at the stadium in the Bronx.